Hello and welcome back to this continuing tutorial on the walking teapot from Pixar. Um, the end of the last tutorial we got as far as here, which was getting some decent lights, some in, an environment light in, um, setting up ray tracing and global illumination. So we have global illumination, a little tiny node down here, size of it doesn't matter. From here on in, um, I want to be looking a lot at the RMS general purpose surface. Okay, so this is the surface which we're using for most of our materials within this scene, and it's a massively, massively powerful, but also quite simple material to understand. The first thing which we did actually in uh, the first part of this tutorial, perhaps, is we actually applied some materials to it. So we have a look at these, we'll see. We have some, not materials, we have some textures, I should say. So we have some textures that actually represent the color channel of these um, materials. Okay, so color is quite simple. Surface color is there. Now, the diffuse gain is basically to do with the physical plausibility of this and the amount of energy which is bounced. So that's the way in which energy is being bounced from this. We won't actually talk about that in great detail here. Discussion will come up at a later point. Translucency, again, not going to be looked at right here. Diffuse roughness, we'll talk about when we come to more diffuse um, objects, but this object is generally quite specular. So we're going to be jumping down here to specular controls. And this can be confusing to people. Um, confuse me to start with. But what we need to understand is that the general purpose shader actually allows us to have a multi-layered shader. So we can have a bottom layer and a top coat. Now, the way in which this is controlled is by having the specular blend here. So if we imagine there are, as they put it in the documentation, two lobes, but if you imagine it basically just two layers, I find it easier to imagine two layers, and there's a blend between them. Okay? So when the blend is set to zero, we only have one layer in operation, and we get a result like this. The reason why we have slight blurriness to it is we actually have slight roughness to our specular. Okay, so this is the result we get. And I'll be working on this top surface because it actually gives me quite a lot of control over what we're seeing. We've got a nice reflection of our environment in this. Okay, so I can make it much more reflective by dropping this down to zero. Now I'm actually going to pause in between um, renders here because the render will taking a little bit longer. Okay, so just bear with me as I render this, re-render, and I'll jump back in when it's almost cooked. Okay, here we can see it rendering away, and it's only the top which we're working on here. Bear that in mind, so we're not seeing the other materials. Um, and yes, indeed, it is very shiny. Very shiny indeed. Looks lovely. I like shiny things. Um, one of the things to remember here, though, is in the real world, we could often have another coat of something on top of it, a protective layer surface coat which will have a different specular quality from the paint layer or the metal layer. So in this case, what, what I'm looking for is perhaps something which is not the previous result. Let's just have a look at the previous result. Pull this up. So the previous result was like this, and that's quite a blurry reflection here. And the new result is here. Now, what I've done is I've gone between a 0 0.08 and a 0. Okay. Um, if I go to 0 0.04, I'm not going to necessarily get a result which is blending between these, because I'd like to have a certain amount of this contribution and a certain amount of this contribution. Let's just try and making it, sorry, and make it uh, 0 0.004 and see what it looks like. So let me just go back to where we were with this surface. Let's go to the top and Control Z, and we'll go back to if I recall correctly. Oops. Let me go to Z. Okay. And it should be the point zero zero eight. If I make this point zero zero four, and let's see what our result is. Okay, I was correct. It was that. And again, I'll I will pause now. Okay, so this is almost rendered, and we can see again, this was a 0 0.08. This was zero, which means there's no specular roughness. It's perfectly smooth, mirror smooth. 
and this is 0 0.04. Okay, so we're not really getting an effect of a smooth layer on top of a slightly rougher layer, even though we've just halved the division between them. So that's the kind of result I'd like to get here. How am I going to do this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to blend two different specular levels together, which is one of the things which this general purpose shader is really cool for letting us do. So I'll drop this back to 0 0.008. Let me drop that 0 0.008. And now for my top for my top layer, I'm going to make sure I have a blend here for a start. So at zero, we're getting no blending whatsoever, and it's only this which is working. I'm going to set a blend to about 0.5. Let's just make a 0.5. Okay. And for my roughness, for my diffuse rough, or for my specular roughness here, I have zero. Okay. So in this case, we're not going to have. It is a mirror. This is a mirror on the top layer. And the bottom layer, we have slight roughness. And again, I will pause as we render this. I'm going to pause for you now. Okay. And we're very, very close to finishing this render. Now we'll go back and we'll compare the way in which these looked. So what we had, this was entirely 0 0.08 for our specular and there was no blending. This was entirely 0 0.0. So in other words, it was mirror like. This was 0.4. And this, you may see a slight difference here, is a blend between a 0 0.0 and a 0.8. So we're getting some areas of smoothness some areas of sharpness and it pre produces a really nice dual layer specular which is really really to be um, desired in a lot of cases because a lot of times we actually have two different speculars working at the one time now i'm just going to go through this scene and i'm going to actually set the specular up for the other materials which we can see here and i'll re-render the final result we'll see similar results happening here and to a certain extent here it won't be that dramatic but it will actually make a difference so i'll just set these up for this and be back to you in one moment. I'll just pause while I do this. And we're almost back finished this render. I've reset those materials here, the ones which you can see, to have similar um, material attributes to the top here. So if we go back and we have a look at our previous images, this was our base image, where everything was set basically to 0 0.008. We made the top shinier, we reduced its roughness. But if you compare this to our final image here, almost finished, we'll see certainly there is a difference, but the main difference is in areas of high reflection. There's some difference down here, which you may be able to see in your in your recorded session. It's difficult to actually know. Um, but yes, this area here is quite significant. Okay, so this is part of what the um, how shall I put it, the general purpose shader actually can achieve with layered materials here. Be aware that one of the things which will be most relevant to it will actually be index refraction as well, because changing this will actually change the whole reflection. Now I'm just going to change this up to something quite high, um, as metal tends to have a high index reflection. refraction. I think 2.5 is approximately what this will be. I'll actually dig out some um, information and I will start re-rendering this and we'll see how it re-renders. Just get it kicked off and I'll actually dig up some material on the IOR. IOR has a direct impact on the Fresnel, which is the fall off based on angle which a reflective material will have. So I'm just going to hold this for a second. I'm going to get some IORs for you. Okay, and we're back again, looking at just this side, which I've actually changed the index refraction. So I changed the index refraction here to 2.5. Um, that produces quite a different look from when we had it at, in this case, it was 1.5. Okay, so we can actually work with these, and we can work with real-world values based on materials. Index refraction relates directly to the Fresnel. Okay. So this is from um, the V-Ray site, and there is a huge list here of the IORs of various different uh, materials. 
So in this case, it's quite possible that 2.5 is a bit high because that will be the index refraction for steel. Um, if we have a look at the index refraction for plastic, plastic is about 1.46. So the 1.5 is not far off what we wanted. Okay, we're going to leave things here for the moment. I'm going to go off and go to an Autodesk event this afternoon and hopefully come back inspired and do some more stuff for you this evening. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. This has just been a quick look at the dual lobe specular within the RMS GPS. And there's a lot more to do with this. Very powerful, but yet still simple material. Thanks again for your time. Any questions, please don't hesitate to get back to me.